Welcome to the behind the scenes of the 2022 Millinery Australia Design Award. This year our theme has been counterbalance and we've had a record breaking 47 fellow members register to share a piece with you. Um, so we are here today in Melbourne for the judging. We've just had our expert panel um, reviewing the hats, um, having a look over each and every entry. Um, each of these entries is going to be on display at the gala, which is going to be at the Bank on Collins on June 30th this year. A the theme of counterbalance came um, through a search to find something that was a related to a design element. So when we work in millinery a lot, we have some quite traditional themes that we work with that also um, bounce off race days. But what we wanted to be able to do was for all our members to be able to make a connection to the theme. So we explored different design elements um, and landed on the point of counterbalance. Um, and we've had so many different interpretations of what counterbalance means to our members. Um, and you can see quite a range of different skills um, and techniques that have come through in each of the pieces. Thank you so much to our generous sponsors for this competition. Uh, we've got a range of businesses who offer their support through prizes and in-kind support. Um, these include Millinery Australia, The Hat Magazine, The Total Package and Hat Atelier, House of Adorn, Millinery Hub, Hat Blocks Australia, Hat Lines, Be Unique Millinery, Hatter's Millinery Supplies, Hat Academy, Millinery Market, Millinery Info, Hort Dogs Calendar, Hat Talk. Yearing Farm Wines, Best Western Apollo Bay Motel and Apartments, The Fabric Store. included Georgia Skelton, the winner of the 2021 Design Award, Janice Freen Burns, the editor of Vox Prop, and Melissa Jackson, milliner and stylist, as well as educator at Kangan Institute. The panel picked up every one of our entrance pieces and assessed it against four criteria. Innovative design, quality of workmanship, wearability, and response to the theme counterbalance. From there, their scores were collated and we presented them with a top 10, where they got to discuss and compare their notes. And that's how we've reached our top 10 for 2022. Thank you so much to our expert judging panel for their contribution and expert eye. It was really interesting to see the interpretation of the theme counterbalance this year. There were some themes that came through in the pieces, which was really interesting to see how milliners who work completely in independently took the theme and came up with a like interpretation of it. So we saw a little expression of yin and yang, opposites attracting. We saw a few features of orange and pinks paired together, um, along with features of green, which is an interesting experience for particularly some racewear milliners who there is the expectation that green might be an unlucky colour. But we've seen, been seeing that come through in some trends, which is really interesting to sh see a shift in that area. We saw a lot of headbands, but also some classic hats and brimmed hats coming through with clean lines um, and simplistic styles. We've seen a great range of materials used in all the entries. Uh, no pit two pieces are alike. We've seen a range of straws from cinema to traditional Paris sizal, crinoline, wire work, some felts, material covered hats as well. So you can see a great example of a range of millinery techniques throughout all of the pieces. And within this, we've seen a great demonstration of skills. So some have taken a very commercial approach, so looking towards a saleable hat, while others have taken a higher couture approach with finite details and finishing being a priority in the work. So from the gala at the Bank on Collins, the top 10 are then going to be going on a tour of the nation. They'll be heading across to Adelaide Hatters in Adelaide Arcade, across to Sydney, where they're going to visit Embellish Atelier and Strand Hatters, they're moving on to Brisbane, where they're going to be in the Brisbane Arcade at Brisbane Hatters, then up to Bundaberg, where they'll be displayed at Avenal Brothers. So a winning millinery piece to me, well, first, I guess millinery is art, um, but it also is art on the head. So it has to be comfortable to be able to be worn. Not much point in having something, you know, so amazing, but you can't wear it. It still has to be, it is a hat competition, a millinery competition, not just an art competition. 
Um, so for me, it is about um, the design obviously has to be something that we haven't seen before. Hopefully that's what we're looking for. But also the, the techniques are important to me. Um, I love a good stitch. People who know me know that I love to have really good, neat stitching. And I have been, I've had a needle in my hand since I was six years old. So I, I appreciate a good stitching. So for me, the winner has to have that combination of design, unique design, as well as really good, strong technique and neat stitching. Um, I guess that's, that's for me what I look for in a winner. Um, I also think colour is really important when, in ju when judging competitions like this. For me, colour is a really important element. I really love the way that some of the, there's diverse use of colour in the, the top 10 and the competition overall, particularly the use of bright colours like pinks and oranges hitting off each other, but equally a chromatic palette where you've got black and white working together. So the scale and the, the balance and the harmony is all there in one piece. So my um, inspiration for last year, we had to do, choose a, a decade ending in 20, and I chose the 1920s and the aviator hat. And I am a love of recycling and um, I'm op shopper from the way back. And I was at Savers in um, Rabin and I saw this jumper and I can't remember what label it was, but the, the fibre, I just went, that has to be used in something. So I didn't know that was going to be my piece, but that came home with me. And my mother hadn't long passed and um, those that, that know... <laughs> My, my stories of mum before I used to enter these competitions and never do any good and I'd always put on our Facebook page, your mum said I was robbed, you know, by the judges, robbed by the judges. And uh, so this year, I, that year I decided I was just going to do, forget about a competition, I'm just going to channel mum and do something that I really love and I'm really proud of. And um, it was a real turning point for me actually because I've been doing that ever since, just forget everything and just do what I love and that's it. And that was sort of, my, mum was my inspiration, I guess, as usual. <laughs> This is an idea that I've had in my head for a long time and I thought I could use, use it for this competition. It's still an idea, so this is intellectual property, you can't steal it, guys. But of, and it is, is again about a mother's passing. I had this idea of having like, you know, heaven and earth and how that balances us. And I was trying, going to, you know, have a, an artist expression of needle and thread from, from earth to, to the sky, like to the, to the heavens, and that would be the counterbalance, living on earth as opposed to living in the heaven where mum is. So that's, that's what I had, and I've still got that idea so I don't steal it. <laughs> yeah, so working with um, you know, two other judges today, like it was really interesting and we worked very well together. We ha hardly had any, any fumbles. There was a, a couple that you know, they didn't like, that I loved, that I loved, they didn't. It was, a, it was a little bit of that, but at the end, when we saw the top 10, it all, it all sort of made sense. So we were um, yeah, pretty happy with, pretty happy with ourselves, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's one, one occasion, I guess, where I was very passionate that, um, that a certain hat didn't belong in the top 10. And again, back to my stitching, um, like it was a, a great concept and a lovely to look at, but just not what I think a, a top 10, um, the skill level of top 10 millinery association hat should be and I, and I, and I won that battle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
So the focus is on making certain we catch detail. So, you know, everyone's hard work is um, showcased, but also maybe just throw in a little bit of a fashion flair to the shots as well. There is an absolute challenge in putting a photo shoot together when you've got so many different personal styles. So the focus is making certain the hats the hero. We've got a beautiful model um, and she is briefed to make those hats come to life. And yeah, we can't wait to get started. You might see Richard in the background setting up with Lauren. End. Full stop. What does she do? <laughs>